you can't get any better message than that. The same Apostle Paul who usually talks about nice things with congregations and only addresses problems later. In this letter, he doesn't start with, you know, with these pleasantries. Instead, the Apostle Paul shoots right up. He cuts to the chase. He gets on to business. And he shows us how to approach the subject of false teachers. Brethren, I want to challenge all of us this morning. When it comes to a false teaching, when it comes to false uh, doctrines that are being taught, as the congregation, we need to display the same uh, level of agency that the Apostle Paul is displaying. He, he doesn't say, no, let me start buttering them up and saying all these nice things and only later will I address this subject. He addresses it immediately and I think there's a reason why false teaching has to be addressed instantaneously. There's a reason why false teaching has to be addressed as a matter of extreme agency, brethren. And the reason that we have and that we find is, 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 is the reason that Christ gives. You know, when you read the book of Matthew, chapter, 5, chapter 23, verse 15, listen to what Christ says. And, and I think that should send chills down our spine when we read Matthew, chapter 23, verse 15. Because you know, it should scare us. This is what false teachers do. In Matthew 23, verse 15, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land to make one a convert or a proselyte. And when he becomes one of you, when he becomes your convert, what do you do? You make him twice as much a son of hell as yourself. Church of Christ, we need to wake up when it comes to this subject of, of false teaching. You see, we are lexed as the church. You know, we, we, can, we can stay with someone who's teaching falsely for years. And, and sometimes we, we hear brethren saying, we hope that he will outgrow it. That's not how to address the subject. The Apostle Paul is instructive. He is showing us the way. This is how you address false teachers. You don't wait until it germinates. You deal with it instantaneously. You see, false teaching, brethren, is like these animals that we call termites. You see, termites are very interesting animals. You see, they will start eating your foundation and eating eating it up. And, and by the time you see them uh, uh, on the surface, of your of your foundation the whole foundation is gone if we do not exhibit and 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 show a sense of agency when it comes to false teachings we will wake up one day and find that our congregations are gone so so i want all of us to adopt the same level of agency that the apostle paul is adopting he cuts straight to the chase he does not massage them he does not pamper them with nice words. Instead, he is urgent and so should we be. We need to be urgent when it comes to dealing with false teachers because of what impact they have on our congregation. The second thing that I'm, I've observed from, from the Apostle Paul uh, in, verse, in verse 3 is how he is describing these false teachers. The Apostle Paul is giving us a good descriptions of these false teachers. I want to delve into it now because I think it's important for us to know what a false teacher looks like. Because very often in the church, uh, we have declared some to be false teachers, uh, sometimes rightfully so and sometimes wrongfully so. You see, there were, you know, there are times when a brother gets it wrong once, you know, he has been a faithful member of the church all these years and he gets one teaching wrong and automatically most of us brand that particular person a false teacher. I don't think one mistake warrants us to call a person a false teacher. So there are so many people who've been branded false teachers uh, and unjustifiably. So, so the Apostle Paul is about to give us the characteristics 
of these false teachers. And I hope that these characteristics will help me and you so that we are able to discern and tell when somebody is a false teacher so that we do not brand people false teachers even when they are not false teachers. Brethren, I need to be honest with you. I sometimes get some teachings wrong, but that does not make me a false teacher. I sometimes get some issues wrong, but 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 that does not mean you also in at home, you sometimes get some issues wrong, and that does not make you a false teacher. So I think it is worth traveling this journey with the Apostle Paul, so that the Apostle Paul can explain to us the characteristics of a false teacher. The first thing that he says about these false teachers in verse 3, he calls them certain men. You know, I like the Apostle Paul. He calls biblical things by biblical names. He doesn't call biblical things something else. He calls them certain men. He does not identify them by calling them brothers or, or sisters. He just calls them certain men. And every time he uses that phrase, certain men, or some men, he then drops an insight on what they do. So I want us to follow all the instances where the Apostle Paul uses the word certain men. Listen to what he says in verse 3. Certain men, I urge you upon my departure, remain on at Ephesus so that you may instruct certain men not to teach strange doctrines. Number one, what are we learning about these false teachers? These false teachers teach strange doctrines. I'm telling you, you know, when you listen to some of the things that we see on, 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 on our social media space and, and you really, really apply your mind to them, you, you actually realize that some of these teachings are strange, man. You know, these are not things we are accustomed to. These are not in line with the gospel that was once delivered by our Lord. But they are teaching something else. So number one, uh, usually false teachers, when you, when you follow them, you see that there's something strange about their teaching. Actually, the Apostle Paul uses a, a, a Greek word, uh, and, and he uses one word for these three words, teach false doctrines in verse 3. He uses the word, they teach hetero, hetero didaskalos. That's the word he uses uh, in order to capture their identity. He is calling a spade a spade. This is what they are. Brethren, these people are not brothers, but they are false teachers. Whoever teaches strange things that are contrary to what we know, that are contrary to what we have been accustomed to, chances are they are hetero didaskalei. They are false teachers. Number two, how do you identify a false teacher? I like what he says in verse six. He says, for some men straying from these things have turned aside to fruitless discussions. That's another way of identifying a false teacher. Here we are not talking about people outside the church only. You see, whenever we, we, we raise the subject of false teaching, it, it's very easy for us to look at those false teachers outside the church. We know they are false teachers. But here the Apostle Paul was looking at people who once taught the truth, who were once with us, who have since strayed from the word of God. So mo most of these false teachers, brethren, are not found outside. Some of these false teachers are found from among us. I like what Paul says in Acts chapter 20, verse 13. Verse 30, he says, from among us will emerge voracious wolves. I, I like what he says. He's not saying from outside. Paul here was warning the elders at Ephesus and he was telling them about the very same phenomenon of false teaching. And he is giving them a forewarning. He is warning them in advance of these people. And listen to what he says. And from among you, your own selves, men will arise. Where are they arising? Not outside, but from among us, speaking perverse things, strange things. And, and listen to this, drawing away the disciples after them. What is the aim of false teachers? The aim of false teachers is not to draw people to Christ. But what 
is their aim. Their aim is to draw people to themselves. You see, brethren, immediately when I start encouraging you to follow me and not follow Christ, you must be very suspicious of me. All I am, I'm a servant of Yahweh. All I am is a vessel. All I, we are as preachers, we, we, are, we, are, we are actually uh, the gerousi. We are the proclaimers of the word of God. Immediately when you start hearing people having their own ministries, you know, immediately when you hear me starting and, and, and wanting to extricate myself from Hilltop and saying, this is justice ministry. Ministry. Know that something is fishy. I like what the Apostle Paul after, did after he performed wonders. People were beginning to bow down to him. They were calling him Zeus and calling uh, his compatriot uh, Hermenas. In other words, they were calling them Greek gods, saying the gods have descended on this world and they are, are, are worshipping the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul was quick to say, stand up, do not worship me. Worship God. I am only a human being. And actually the Apostle Paul goes to an extent of tearing his own clothes to show people that he is just a mere mortal. So how do you see that someone is a false teacher? Immediately when they draw all the attention to themselves as opposed to drawing attention to God. That is how you know that they are decide that they're becoming false teachers. And I like what the Apostle Paul says. He's saying these things are not happening outside only. They are also happening from amongst us. They were with us. They were preaching the same doctrine that we were preaching. They did whatever we are doing. And now they have strayed away. I like the word strayed. It didn't happen in one day. You see, a person does not become a false teacher in a day. It, 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 they, they, they are drifting away. It's like when you are in debt and there are waves. You, you don't sink instantaneously. But it's a process. Let's be careful that we also, who are preaching the gospel of salvation, do not stray and become false teachers. So point number two, they are from among us and they like drawing people to themselves and not to God. The second point that the Apostle Paul is, is mentioning with the third point uh, of or the third way of seeing if a person is a false teacher, verse 19, this is what they do. Keeping faith and a good conscience which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. The Apostle Paul is saying and warning all of us not to think that these false teachers are still part of us. Some of them do not get out of the church. Some of them continue with us. Some of them continue in the fold. But listen to what the Apostle Paul is saying. They have already shipwrecked their faith by their teaching because what does their teaching do their teaching is affecting their conscience they have rejected the lord and so sometimes we stay with people thinking we're still on the same boat only to find that we are no longer in the same boat they have departed from the faith a long time ago all we are just seeing is is their physical body but they have departed from the truth. That is why God says the Lord knows those who are his. There's an inscription that has been written that the Lord knows those who are his. If you claim to belong to God, depart from all wickedness. I am not one to point people and say, you are no longer in the church. You are in the church. God knows them. And so whoever is teaching strange things, whoever is drawing people to himself, not to God, the Bible says he has not only shipwrecked the other people's faith, but he has shipwrecked his faith. That is the third characteristic. They are here, but they are no longer with us. I like what First John says. Uh, for the Apostle Paul, John says uh, they, 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 were, they left us and, and, and the mere fact that they left us is telling that they were not with us in the first instance. So sometimes we mourn when these people leave the church. But the Apostle John says they were not with us even 
even initially. So that's the third way of seeing uh, if a person is a false teacher or not. In First Timothy chapter 4, he gives us another characteristics of these people. And what does he say? He says, by the Spirit explicitly says in verse 1, that in the latter time, some will fall away from the faith. Eh? Paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. So how do you see that somebody is now a false teacher? Is if they are now paying attention to deceitful spirits. They come telling us about uh, the prophecies. They come telling us about, about, about what was revealed to them as though there's something special with them and all of us are just ordinary people. I, I mean, these are people uh, that the Apostle Paul is saying they are now following uh, what? Deceitful spirits. And, and, and what does he say? He says the teachings that they now teach are doctrines of demons they are not doctrines they are not sound doctrines but doctrines of demons how do you see number four that a person has departed from the faith and from and is becoming a, so, as a, a, a false teacher they start teaching deceitful things they start teaching doctrines of demons. Number five, how do, can we say that a person is becoming a false teacher? In 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 15, for some have already turned aside to follow Satan. Like I said before, sometimes you might be under the impression that we're still in the same church. We are still doing the same thing. But the Apostle Paul was saying these people are now followers of what? Of Satan. Actually in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 20, he names them. In verse 20 he says, among these are Hermenas and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan. I've disfellowshipped them. The phrase handing over to Satan means I've disfellowshipped them so that they will be taught not to blasphemy. This, 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 is, this is very important. If you don't teach the doctrine of Christ, you are teaching the doctrine of demons. There is no middle way. It's either you are with us or you are against us. This is what Christ our Lord said. And Paul says, I've handed them over to Satan. And because he has handed them over to Satan, what does he say to them? He says that they are now followers of the devil. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 15. For some have already turned aside to follow Satan. You are still under the impression that they are still followers of God. But whoever teaches something contrary to God is now a follower of Satan. Uh, the fifth characteristic, how do you see that someone is now becoming a false teacher? And uh, when you read First Timothy chapter 5, verse 24, the sins of some are quite evident. In other words, whatever they do is evident. Everybody can tell that this guy used to be sound. This guy used to preach the truth. And something has went wrong. You see, the works of the flesh, brethren, are obvious. Everybody can see when Brother Justice has moved away from the truth. So you do not need microscopes. You can tell that there is something wrong about this person. And I, I like what he says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 to give us the last characteristic of these guys. You know what do they do? He says, for the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it they love money and because they love money have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs you know sometimes i look at these people who used to be strong in the faith and and sometimes i wonder what went wrong you know, have, have you ever experienced that? You look at this brother who used to teach sound doctrine, who used to be very sound with the teachings of Christ, and all of a sudden they become false teachers. They teach things continuously, not just once, but repeatedly they, 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 they teach strange things. What has happened to those people? Have you ever wondered what has happened? Listen to the answer. The answer is, Sometimes it's because of the love of money. People choose money 
over their souls. And, and because sometimes, brethren, people choose money over their souls, they wander away from the faith. If you look at this false teaching, behind it, behind it is the love of money. Hamenas uh, and uh, that other preacher, uh, Alexandra, is because of the love of money. I always tell my wife, we rather suffer. We rather continue uh, driving this small quid if that is what it will take, uh, as long as if we do not corrupt our souls. You see, Christ makes a very important distinction. He says nobody can save God and money at the same time. You can never save God and save money at the same time. One will suffer. You will love one and hate another. I believe, brethren, and the excuse usually is that, you see, the reason why people are becoming false teachers in the church is because we are starving them in the church. I'm going to tell you, if you are a preacher and you are starving, hold on, my brother, hold on. Many of us, are, preaching is not, is not a, a, a calling to make money, but it is to save people. So, brethren, we must refuse to sell the truth. And these people, according to the Apostle Paul, are people who have already sold the truth. So those are the characteristics of these people. But what do they teach in conclusion? What exactly do these people teach? I like what he says uh, there in, in, in verse 4. He says, no, pay attention to myths. They teach myths. They do not teach the truth. What is the opposite of a myth? is the truth. What do these people teach? They teach myths. When you look at First Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 7, it says, but have nothing to do with worldly fables or worldly myths, which are only fit for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of of godliness and so what is the context to this what 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 does the verse before say and the verse after say actually the context here you'll find it in 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 in, in verse 3 uh, actually verse 2 it says by means of hypocrisy of liars seared their own conscience as with a hot iron men who forbid others to marry and they advocate abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared in by those who believe and know the truth. What do false teachers teach? They teach people to abstain from marriage. They teach people to abstain from certain foods. This was what was happening here. And I suspect these were Judaizer teachers with their dietary requirements, telling brethren that you are not acceptable, you are not a full Christian until you, 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 you abstain from certain foods, telling brethren that, you know, if you eat this and you eat that, it makes you unholy and unspiritual before God. Brethren, those are myths. If I teach that, or anybody tell you not to eat pork, I think that's the famous one. People are telling people not to eat pork because for some reason, pork, or, you know, they count that story where Jesus Christ uh, exorcised demons from those pigs. And they say, even today, pigs are unclean. What did Jesus Christ say to us, brethren? What is it that causes people to be unclean? Uh, he says, it's not what comes from outside that makes a man unclean, but it is what is coming from within that is making us unclean. It's not what you're eating that is making you unclean, but it is what is coming from inside that makes you and clean. Uh, Matthew chapter 15 and uh, uh, Matthew chapter 15 and he explains what makes people unclean. Matthew chapter 15 uh, verse 18 but the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and those defile a man. It's not what you eat from outside but it's what you eat from inside. When I grew up there was a very nice ad on TV. It says it's not inside is on top. I want to say today, it's not outside, it's inside. That which makes us, the thoughts we have. Aren't you happy and glad that people don't know the thoughts you have? 
I'm standing here before a brother in the Lord. I don't know what thoughts he has about me. I don't know. Maybe he's thinking that after this, I need to strangle this brother. That is what makes us unclean. It is not the food that makes people unclean, but it is what comes from inside. So these people were teaching people to abstain from marriage and saying, marriage will contaminate you. Marriage is a blessing from God. Marriage is to be honored by all. Marriage is a divine institution. My wife certainly does not make me unclean. If anything, she compliments me. She is my suitable partner and she makes me whole. Oh, these false teachers have misled many people. So that is the first thing that they teach. The second thing that these people teach, uh, which is very interesting, is they teach cleverly crafted tales cleverly crafted tales it, all they teach is human philosophies they have nice sounding slogans they have nice sounding words but the apostle paul says they are just cleverly crafted myths and one of the common myths that these false teachers teach is that they had an encounter with god Jesus Christ appeared to them. I remember speaking to one uh, outside the Church of Christ. Uh, fortunately, I was not in the Church of Christ. The one outside the Church of Christ was telling me, you know, just as I was praying uh, at 3 a.m. And, 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 and all of a sudden I saw a mist around me. And, and, and I heard a voice speaking to me saying, I've appointed you to save people, to heal people, to prophesy to people. Brethren, those are myths. Actually, the agenda behind those myths is to position him as being special, as having a special relationship with God and position most of us and many of us as being inferior, as being people who do not have a, a good relationship with God. If your preacher, if I, he'll top us, make you feel like there's something special about me, make you feel like I have a special relationship with God that you do not have, know that my teaching is false we are just servants men of god we are just a, 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 a mouthpieces of god there is nothing special about me i experience the things that you experience i am locked down as we speak i am experiencing i'm afraid of corona like you are even though my eyes are on god there is nothing special i like the apostle paul uh, what he says in in second corinthians chapter 12 he, he talks about these guys he says all they do is to break and and tell you how special they are if your preacher wherever you are, is projecting himself as this special person and all of you are commoners, know that they are false teachers. They are not worth following. Lastly, I want to suggest that these people are teaching teachings that are contrary to the word of God and they are contrary to the teachings of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus teach us? Jesus taught all of us to obey the word of God. Jesus taught all of us uh, that we need to be sanctified uh, with the truth. Um, in John chapter 7, 17, verse 17, which is my closing scripture, John chapter 17, verse 17. Listen to what Jesus is teaching us. He's saying, sanctify them by their truth for your word is true. Uh, when you read John 17, verse 17, this is how it reads. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As I sit down, I want to highlight something that is very strange. A strange teaching that is happening in the Church of Christ today. We attended a conference recently uh, where, you know, we were sharing ideas. And, you know, one of the people who was presenting there mentioned something very, very strange. It was the first time I hear such a teaching. And what he said is that, you know, as the Church of Christ, we put too much emphasis on the Bible, on the Word. We must stop putting too much emphasis on the Word, and we must start putting emphasis on Christ. It sounds nice. These are cleverly crafted words. 
and they 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 saying uh, because we are we are now worshiping the word we are no longer worshiping Christ if we put too much emphasis on the word and not on Christ but when you really interrogate this teaching brethren there's something that you will find that will shock you and amaze you number one when you read the Bible nowhere does the word separate Christ from his word actually if there's anything that the Bible does in in John chapter 1 it tells us about the word and listen to what it says in John chapter 1 in the beginning there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God who is this word it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so Jesus is not only having the word but he is the way you cannot separate Jesus from his ways it's like separating me from my ways now it is practically impossible so these people want us to close our Bibles and only place emphasis on Christ I don't know about you there at home but as for me Christ has never appeared to me I have never had an encounter a physical encounter with Christ the only encounter I've had with Christ is through his words. So if you are going to tell me to close the word and put emphasis on Christ, I get lost. It's like a man who is working with a GPS to Devon and you tell him close the GPS and go to Devon. Who has never been to Devon? Brethren, let us run away from such. That is false teaching. You cannot separate Christ from his way. He is the way. He prayed to his father and he says, Father, sanctify them by the, the truth, for your word is true. I want to end by saying to you, whenever we open the word, we open in the very mouth of God. These false teachers want us to close the word and not be like the Berean Christians in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Paul says the Christians at Berea are of more noble character. For after the Apostle Paul was done preaching, they went to the word and examined the word for themselves so that they can see if the, what the Apostle Paul has taught is true. I suspect that the reason why they want us to close the word is so that we cannot be critical. Of their teachings I always encourage members at Hilltop after I'm done preaching go and study the way study to show yourself approved a workman who is not ashamed but one who correctly divides the word of truth if anyone wants you to shut and close the word and be practical that's what they say we need to be practical let's not go to the way or some of them will tell you when i was young i used to look for a scripture for every every problem i had now i have matured in other words they've outgrown the way brethren whoever does not lead you to the word but leads you away from the word is a false teacher and don't follow him this was so in the history of the church when you go to church history i have the privilege of teaching church history at the bible college there how did the church people depart from the truth immediately when they started telling people not to read the word for themselves but only allow the priests the preachers and the leaders and the bishops to read the word and we know I won't mention the name, but you know uh, whom I'm referring to. You know how the church started apostatizing. It is a real danger. If we allow this teaching in our church of closing the way and allowing these people to tell us not to worship the way, we are on, we are training on, on, on thin ice and we are going to fall like they did if the church falls let it not be in our generation let it not be on on our own watch let us read the word of god for ourselves for the psalmist say in psalms 119 i have treasured your word in my heart so that i may not sin against you if we close the word we will start sinning against god may the lord bless the reading of his word and may he bless you as you examine for yourself the word of god
to uh, conclude our service yeah. and say thank you very much for joining us. May God continue to bless you. May you continue to stream with us as we expose the word of truth. For thy word is true. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is true. Amen. Amen.